Rust for MLOps with Amazon SageMaker. Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and I'm a Duke executive in residence. I'm also the founder of Pragmatic AI Labs and a five-time best-selling O'Reilly author. And finally, I'm an AWS ML hero. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have a lot to cover. First, inside this presentation, we're going to talk about how Rust uh, is a modern systems programming language with unique features. And we're also going to talk about MLOps and its importance in machine learning projects and also provide an overview of AWS SageMaker and how it supports MLOps. So first up here, why do we care about Rust? Well, in a nutshell, Rust, MLOps, and Amazon SageMaker are a great combination. And Rust itself is a great choice for MLOps due to its strength in binary deployment. And we're also going to talk about SageMaker as well which has great support for MLOps. So first up here, let's talk about Rust, which is a loved language. Uh, Stack Overflow in 2022 talked about how seven years running, it's the most loved language. So that's a pretty big accomplishment. And some of the things that are helping this are the developer experience. You can think about the popularity as a testament to the developer experience and also the strong focus on safety, ergonomics and performance. And there's an active community and extensive documentation because of its popularity and ease of use. In terms of the ecosystem, it's rapidly growing. There's a, a lot of libraries and tools available for machine learning, data processing, and web development. And this strong ecosystem is crucial for MLOps. And also in terms of industry adoption, major companies are using uh, the Rust language and AWS themselves heavily uses the Rust language. And it's really designed uh, with its characteristics in a way that makes MLOps a great support tool. So let's go ahead and get into Rust here for MLOps and talk about performance, memory safety, concurrency features, and also talk about some popular Rust libraries as well. First up, we have the language features that support MLOps, right? Really, this is the, the key reason why people care about uh, Rust for MLOps is that the performance benefits, when you compare them to a language like Python, are significant. And it could be anywhere from 50 to 1,000 times faster because of the compiled nature and also the low memory usage. Also, Rust performance can lead to faster model training and inference, which reduces cost. And everything uh, about cloud computing is about optimizing cost. And with memory safety, you can eliminate common bugs and security vulnerabilities. And it's critical for things like MLOps where large data sets and models can lead to memory related issues. Finally, in terms of concurrency, the concurrency model is actually designed for parallelism and multi-threaded performance. And these features make it a great choice for high performance computing, which is what MLOps is all about. And finally, the binary deployment is a huge feature which allows you to build once and deploy many. In terms of Rust libraries for machine learning and data processing, there's quite a few. And let's highlight these key four libraries. First up, we have uh, the PyTorch bindings here. And this is one of the most popular deep learning frameworks. And these bindings allow developers to build, train, and deploy models using Rust. And you can combine PyTorch with Rust to get incredible performance. There's also Linfa, which is a Rust-based machine learning library. It's inspired by Python scikit-learn, and it uses a variety of ML algorithms. And it's also user-friendly and ready to be used for MLOps tasks. Next up, we have Polars, which is a data frame library, and it complements the parallel processing speed of Rust. And you can use it for the same things you would use Pandas for data manipulation, aggregation, transformation. Finally, it's uh, really widely available in terms of both single-threaded and multi-threaded environments, and it's efficient for data processing. And then finally, we have Onyx, which is an emerging standard here for uh, representing ML models, which means that many different frameworks are able to work with the Onyx standard. And that runtime is available via Rust, and it's been actually put into the official repository. So it's a first-class citizen for Onyx. Now, let's dive into SageMaker here and talk about how it 
is very complementary for Rust. Uh, we're going to talk about Jupyter, built-in algorithms, training, hyperparameter tuning. So in a nutshell, the reason why people care about something like Amazon SageMaker is that it's a fully managed ML service, right? So you don't have to manage things that are less important to adding business value. Instead, you have the capability of using Jupyter Notebooks that allow you to develop, document, and share ML code. You can use built-in algorithms and pre-built containers. And these containers allow you to use a variety of algorithms. And these pre-built containers are already included with the popular deep learning frameworks. In terms of model training, you also don't have to worry about the scalability. This is built into the framework. And also the tedious task of doing hyperparameter tuning is also taken care of because of the automation around SageMaker. And finally, one of the more important aspects of MLOps is the monitoring and debugging. These are integrated into SageMaker itself, which also has a rich integration with AWS, which has great monitoring and debugging tools. So in a nutshell, this is a perfect match, Rust and SageMaker. And we're gonna talk about some of the key touch points here. In terms of the touch points, well, we have Rust for AWS Lambda, and later in a demo, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but AWS Lambda is perfect for Rust because it enables users to do things like data processing, model training, and inference. And it's actually done in a way that's extremely cost-effective and there's a great uh, deployment story as well. There's also Rust containers for SageMaker. And this allows you to have Rust containers that can be created and used in SageMaker for training and deployment. You also can use these containers to leverage Rust performance and safety features and even use advanced uh, container technology like Distrolist, which makes extremely small containers. The Rust AWS SDK, which is in active development from AWS, has a Rust native interface, and you can actually communicate directly with SageMaker and orchestrate it, control it, and actually talk to it in an async way. There's also a couple other really exciting integrations. One is EFS, which allows you to share a Onyx model directly with, let's say, AWS Lambda. And then there's also Onyx itself, which has great integration with SageMaker and Rust. So in terms of one of the great integrations, uh, it's important to talk about Amazon SageMaker Silicone or Neo. And what's important about this is the fact that you can actually build and train uh, models that are targeted for a hardware platform and you have optimized performance. So you get this really good performance story from using the SageMaker Silicone. In particular, one of the stories that's a very interesting story is that you build a model with Rust and you then convert it to Onyx, then Onyx then can go to Neo. So you have this great story with open source frameworks from Apache that directly integrate with Amazon SageMaker. So let's talk a little bit next here about the Rust for MLOps workflow. In terms of the Rust for MLOps workflow, really it's about this use. So you wanna pre-process things with Rust. Again, you could use libraries like Polars. Training, again, you could combine with the PyTorch bindings and get this great training story. And then for using, you can actually use this Onyx model, which has great integration with Rust and also great integration with SageMaker. And then finally, you can deploy it to an endpoint and you could actually use that endpoint from SageMaker. You could use it from Lambda and also you're gonna get great monitoring and debugging as well. So there's a great story here for Rust for MLOps with SageMaker. Now let's talk a little bit about a case study that you would use when you're using Rust for MLOps. So in terms of a case study, one of the things that's important to talk about is a real world you know, story of Rust with MLOps and SageMaker and talk about some of the challenges, solutions and outcomes. Well, one of the ones that's important to talk about is Onyx. And Onyx itself has, again, this great story where you can take multiple different frameworks, combine them into one library and get high performance runtime. So again, Onyx has great support for both Rust and also for Amazon SageMaker, you can see that this runtime is very easily called from Rust bindings. Here's a perfect example of one of the things you could do with uh, MLOps with Rust and Onyx. You could have Cloud9 be your development environment, potentially use Code Whisper to help you develop the code. You could mount 
the Elastic File System inside of Cloud9, configure it with the proper permissions, and then finally, inside of Lambda, you can mount this EFS volume and use a Rust-based inference to do predictions for computer vision, natural language processing, et cetera. This is a great use case that I've personally used that you can use with both Rust, Lambda, and EFS. So next, let's talk about a demo, and let's actually show you the Rust bindings by asynchronously talking to a Lambda tool, and you can see the performance in a nutshell. Here is the architecture of an AWS Rust Lambda that is a systems programming type Lambda. What does it do? Well, it is able to asynchronously communicate with S3. S3 could contain thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files, and it could asynchronously go through, go to all the buckets, look inside of each bucket for each object, and then do some kind of operation. In this particular Lambda, which is a monitoring Lambda, I calculate every single object and put in a total. In this case, it takes about three seconds to, to run my particular bucket configuration. And then I'm able to later put that into a dashboard, a command line tool, perhaps some kind of monitoring or billing system. And it's all done through the power of the async Rust SDK. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work. First up, we have the AWS SDK here, and you can see an example of what it looks like is that you first use whatever particular component of the SDK. You use Tokyo, which is async library. And this particular environment here, you can show how it will asynchronously list potentially all the tables inside of the AWS environment. Now that you've seen how this works, let's go ahead and look at the code itself. So if we go into GitHub code spaces, I've got a async AWS Lambda here, and you can see some of the code where I say use AWS SDK S3. I make a AWS S3 client first. Then I make a, a list of all buckets uh, function here. You can see I say pub async list all the buckets. So again, the async gives us the ability to uh, run this in a network async way. And then finally, I am able to calculate the size of the bucket by summing every single object in the bucket, which is nice. Finally, what I do here is I use uh, the list buckets to get a list of all the buckets in the account. Uh, and then this goes through and creates the bucket sizes. Now, if I go to the main here, all this does is use Lambda to uh, create a human readable helper method. And then in terms of the, the function handler here, the function handler is able to uh, run that code uh, that we set up previously uh, and then return back the response. Now, inside of this uh, particular main method here, it then goes through and calls those other methods. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cargo file as well. So inside this cargo file, you can see here I've got some deserialization library. I have the async library. I have AWS, and I have that human size library. That's it. And then in terms of the make file, we can see here that in order to invoke it, I can just go ahead and run this uh, make file. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll actually change the name to be something a little bit slicker. I'll just say uh, run, or how about count? Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll say make invoke. Uh, and then in this particular example, oh, I don't have Cargo Lambda uh, enabled, easy to fix. Let's go ahead and source our virtual environment here, which is how I have Cargo Lambda installed. Now, if I run it, well, it'll take about three seconds and it will synchronize uh, inside and count the total storage. In this case, 114 gigabytes across all the buckets that I have. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Lambda itself. If we go over to Lambda, you can see here that I have this async Lambda. I can also test it inside of here. I just go to test here. You can see a previous invocation. Uh, in this case, I just have a payload that says name run. It's really a, an empty payload. I go ahead and click test, and you can see it run in action. So this is a great pattern with Rust uh, is to have high-performance systems monitoring lambdas. Again, this one does something where it calculates all the bucket sizes, but you could see how you could build things that talk to other components like EFS or maybe uh, the uh, also the EMR or maybe to all your EBS storage or some kind of systems monitoring uh, tool that is able to run very, very efficiently 
and also at a low duration. In this case, this only took me uh, about two and a half seconds to run, and I'm able to run it at the lowest level as well. So it's a very low memory usage uh, Lambda. So in a nutshell, it's easy to build uh, high performance systems tools using Rust. In this case, we are able to hook it into a Lambda, and I can invoke it from a command line tool, invoke it on a terminal, uh, invoke it inside of a event, let's say a timer once a day, and or put it into a dashboard. Okay, that's it for this presentation. I hope you learned about uh, the exciting things about Rust. We're going to talk about Rust for MLOps and SageMaker in later presentations. And I also would encourage you to talk about uh, Rust and explore Rust on your own, and also look at the following resources that I have available. Uh, in these resources here, we have a GitHub repo, which is a Rust for MLOps template. And there's many examples of using Rust for MLOps on the AWS platform. I also have a tutorial that goes over some of the lecture notes I use at a Duke graduate cloud computing course. There's also the Rust uh, language website and also a GitHub tutorial website that you can take a look at. Thank you very much. You can reach me on LinkedIn, YouTube, GitHub, and also my site, Pragmatic AI Labs.